my guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, just a wee bit chilly day. Here in the end times, we are deep in the Point Lonesome Swamp down here in the Oasis of Freedom on this gorgeous, but a little bit chilly Saturday morning. That would be January 29th, 2022. So anyway, the little dog and I, we need to head back out into the Florida swamplands to find another piece of paradise to buy to flip here in a couple of years. But before we head out, since it is Saturday morning, I'm going to do what I <coughs> try to do uh, every Saturday morning, and that is to bring you our weekly hopium apocalyptic roundup from the mainstream media, the alternative media, and wherever else we're getting bombarded with hopium here as the collapse of global industrial civilization escalates. But we're going to start our, don't tell me, you know, I just get so sick of it. Anyway, we're going to start uh, with a we're going to find out why Al Gore, one of our favorite billionaires, Save the Planet billionaires, why is Al Gore still optimistic about the future of the planet? Well, we're going to let CBS News explain it to you. So uh, take it away. Why is Al Gore optimistic? about the future of our planet. U.S. greenhouse gas emissions, which contribute to global warming, roared back in 2021 after falling during the height of pandemic lockdowns. Former Vice President Al Gore has been sounding the climate change alarm for decades. We sat down with him recently and found he's still optimistic that we can avoid catastrophe. How big is the farm? This farm is 400 acres. Former Vice President Al Gore took us for a ride in his electric ATV. All right. I bet most people don't think of you as Farmer Al. No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and truth to tell, I don't have many calluses on my hands either. Yeah, well, he probably has a few calluses from uh, from uh, counting counting the billions of dollars. No wonder he is uh, he is optimistic about the future of the planet with all of these investment opportunities and all of this save the planet green energy but as long as we're uh good lord guys how many goddamn fucking oops, excuse me I'm forgetting where i am gotta get all of these various batteries so if the battery survives shut up shut up! We've heard enough! He we have heard enough! Jesus! Anyway, <clears throat> now that we've shut that wind bag up, good God Almighty, Al Gore optimistic about the planet, but uh, he is not the only uh, royalty. Uh, optimistic about the planet. Now you probably, I don't know how this went right beyond the, below my radar from COP26, I was completely unaware of this, that <clears throat> Prince Charles has a plan for the planet, I guess, and uh, this was Prince Charles at COP26 Prince Charles shines a spotlight on Cummins Incorporate and Cummins Corporation's commitment to environmental sustainability and decarbonization at COP26 climate change conference. So uh, you know who Cummins Corporation is. I, I, I mean, they make these giants, uh, planet-eating engines. Uh, mainly, I think they're mostly into diesel engines, you know, making the, 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 these giant diesel engines and all of this other stuff. 
So, uh, now that finding out about uh, Prince Charles shining a spotlight on their commitment to environmental sustainability, I was glad to get this update from uh, right here in the mainstream media uh, picking up on that Cummins Corporation adopts new strategy to reach net zero emissions by 2050. Yes, Cummins Incorporated leaders this week introduced to employees a new strategy to reduce the greenhouse gas and air quality impacts of its products, reaching net zero emissions by 2050 in a sustainable way. Yes. This is Tom Linnebarger, Cummins Chairman and CEO. Yes, quote, Climate change is the existential crisis of our time, and we must work together to solve it. Our ability to deliver on our mission of making people's lives better by powering a more prosperous world is threatened by the world's climate challenges. Yes, but Cummins has an opportunity to be part of the solution mm -hmm, to the world's climate challenge by pursuing reductions from both internal combustion engines and new technologies the company has brought to market. All right, no wonder Al Gore is optimistic about the future of the planet when we have Prince Charles shining the spotlight on Cummins Incorporated's new sustainability pledge to reach the mythical net zero by 2050. All right, let's see. Uh, before we get to any spe specifics, I really enjoyed this letter from uh, wherever Pocono is. This is a letter to the editor. I'm going to read the first and the last of it. This long letter to the editor. One conversation. One conversation on climate change can be a drop in a bucket. Can't argue with that. Well, I would change bucket to ocean. All right. Who is this? I don't know. We'll find out later on who this guy is. This is a reader of the Pocono Record. <clears throat> Quote. I recently spoke with a police officer supervising convict workers. He was parked in a van which was left running on a sunny day while they had lunch. Unable to restrain myself, I said to that officer, You know, when you are idling the van, your car is costing money and also fueling the climate emergency. I use the term climate emergency to ha uh, to uh, to hope get folks to better understand the gravity of the weather chaos. The officer politely replied and said, quote, I know, but I have to keep the van in readiness in case we are called for an emergency. I did not want to say, can't you just turn the van on. Anyway, he goes on, but uh, it, 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 anyway, uh, and wrapping up his letter, this conversation that this, that this Good Samaritan uh, had with this cop seems to be a drop in the bucket. Maybe if there are enough drop it, drops, the bucket will be filled. In any event, I 
will be able to look at my grandchildren in the eye and say about the climate emergency, I did what I could. Yes, that is Mark Lichty. Mark Lichty, uh, he has done what he could to uh, save his own grandchildren's lives from climate chaos by unsuccessfully asking a cop to turn off their van while they had lunch. But anyway, what is Amazon Watch? You know, I am subscribed to Amazon Watch. I always like to hear how uh, the little lefties are watching the Amazon. Here, here is the picture of the week out of the Ecuadorian Amazon rainforest. All right, what is going on this week? I guess in the Ecuadorian Amazon. <clears throat> God damn it! <clears throat> Once again, Ecuador's annual conference for oil and energy will be held. Now my battery is running low. God damn it! Ah, shit! All right, you know, I have three batteries. Uh, all right, I have a new virus threat detected on my computer. Back to the Ecuadorian jungle. <clears throat> Ecuador's annual conference for oil and energy will be held Tuesday, February 1st. This event is the Ecuadorian government's effort to attract global investment in oil and gas plans, many of which are aimed at the Amazon rainforest. Yasuni National Park, home to the blah 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 indigenous peoples living in voluntary isolation, is under direct threat. Our indigenous partners oppose any extraction and expansion of oil and gas on their territories and are calling on us, you know, the honkies up here in the U.S., for our solidarity. We are going to storm this event. We are going to storm this event with messages of support calling for an end, an end with a capital E, to Amazon Crude and naming one of its biggest financiers, Citigroup. Will you join us? Yes, will you join us in storming the event? Good luck storming that event. Okay, but now we're gonna just go look at a few specific examples of hopium. Uh, now this one, from the conversation, this is not from the onion. You know, it's kind of like Woody Allen wrote this uh, headline. <clears throat> offshore, offshore wind farms could help carbon could help capture carbon from the air and store it long term. All right, so now we have, oh, good Lord, there, there's a lot of layers of hopium here. This is a triple layer of hopium. Uh, offshore wind farms sucking carbon dioxide out of the air. Yes. <clears throat> Off the Massachusetts and New York coast, developers are preparing to build the United States' first federally approved utility scale offshore wind farms, 74 turbines that could power 470,000 homes. Yes, more than a dozen other offshore wind projects are awaiting approval along the eastern seaboard. 
És... Uh, uh, but that's not all. Uh, in addition to that, human activities have pumped so much carbon dioxide uh, into the atmosphere that we will also have to remove CO2 from the air and lock it away permanently. Offshore wind farms are uniquely positioned to do both and save money. Yes. As a marine geophysicist, I have been exploring the potential for pairing wind turbines with technology that captures carbon dioxide directly from the air and stores it in natural reservoirs under the ocean. Yes, built together, these technologies could reduce the energy costs of carbon capture and minimize the need for onshore pipelines, reducing impacts on the environment. Three cheers for offshore wind farms sucking carbon out of the air. So we're now gonna go from uh, wind power, now we're gonna go over and look at uh, Co cobalt, and this really is, uh, and th this truly is hopium. Uh, this one is not bullshit. We, we finally have a hopium article from the Idaho Statesman, no less. <clears throat> Idaho has biggest U.S. deposit of metal vital for clean energy is a mining boom coming to Idaho. <clears throat> President Joe Biden has set the United States on an ambitious path toward dramatically cutting its carbon emissions in an effort to slow climate change. Thanks, thanks to skyrocketing demand for minerals needed to build electric vehicles, that path could lead to Idaho. Yes, <clears throat> those vehicles need cobalt. Yes, a key component of lithium-ion batteries used in electronic devices and electric vehicles, the GEM state, sits atop <clears throat> the biggest deposit of cobalt in North America. Blah, blah, blah. You damn well better believe if you are hoping uh, to uh, make money off the collapse of a planet by raping and pillaging the wilderness of Idaho. Uh, you will damn straight uh, be applauding this uh, as this absolute horseshit move to electric vehicles, you better believe will uh, bring a mining boom uh, to uh, Idaho and everywhere else on the planet. What have I been reading that uh, in order to, you know, to take this economy carbon free, some estimates, and, and they're probably being uh, conservative, claiming that mining, mining on this planet will increase fivefold five-fold in the next 30 years. 30 years from now, five times as much of this planet will be directly being eaten, probably by giant fossil fuel powered machinery built by Cummins Incorporated and Caterpillar and all those other people with their sustainability pledges. Uh, so we can save the planet from fossil fuels. Okay, two more. All right, where have we heard this story for the past, I'm 62 years. I think this was, uh, I think I learned to read C Spot Run, and then the next words I learned to read were nuclear fusion. 
Okay, from Reuters News, researchers achieve milestone on path toward nuclear fusion energy. All right. U.S. government scientists said on Wednesday they have taken an important step in the long trek toward making nuclear fusion the very process that powers stars a viable source for humankind. Yes. <clears throat> Using the world's largest laser, the researchers coaxed fusion fuel for the first time to heat itself beyond the heat they zapped into it. Yes, achieving a phenomenon called a burning plasma that marked a stride towards self-sustaining fusion energy. Now the energy produced was modest, modest <clears throat> about the equivalent of nine nine volt batteries of the kind that power smoke detectors and other small devices. How many, uh, so this is a picture of the laboratory that uh, produced enough energy to power nine smoke detectors, but of course my blankety blank <coughs> computer does not want you to see the picture. Anyway, it is gone for good, I guess. Uh, where the hell? But I gotta unplug the battery. Can you, can you see this picture of this planet saving? <clears throat> this is the, hope I'm getting that in uh, the camera. This is what a laboratory looks like to power nine smoke detectors. But I think I've been pointing to my empty screen on this computer. <clears throat> anyway, guys, I, uh, one more time. <clears throat> what it looks like to power nine smoke detectors. <clears throat> but we got we're going to wrap up in Australia where we're going to find the news from none other than Time Magazine. Australia just exported its first batch of fuel that does not emit CO2. Hallelujah. And this would, of course, be hydrogen. All right. When the 380-foot-long Suiso Frontier set sail from Australia on Friday bound for Japan with liquid hydrogen in its insulated hold, it marked the first time ever that liquefied nitrogen has been transported by sea to an international market. Yes. Experts say that it's an important milestone for hydrogen, a fuel that several major economies have pinned their hopes on to help them decarbonize. It proves that the supply chain works, they argue, and will kick off international trade in the commodity. Uh, then they quote the uh, the head of this uh, planet-saving company, back to Time Magazine. But there is one catch. The project uses brown coal, also called lignite, a high-emitting energy source to produce the hydrogen. In fact, almost all of the hydrogen used today is made from fossil fuels. <laughs> oh, anyway, guys, we could go on with this, but uh, <clears throat> it is a gorgeous day. The wind is dying down, 
and I need to head off deep into some uh, Florida swamp to uh, try to buy some more swamp land to flip. Now that I have flipped the Point Lonesome Swamp, we're going to find another swamp to flip while I still can before it all goes underwater. Bye guys.